Hi there, I'm Michelle the Painter from Berkshire Paint and Sip and this is Paint and Sip at Home. All right, so today I'm gonna to be painting Abstract Woman Red, <laughs> and I'm gonna be sipping on a little bit of Merlot. So let's get painting and let's get sipping. All right, so what we're gonna be using for materials today is a stretched and prime 16 by 20 inch canvas. Um, you can certainly switch up the size if you'd like, but that's what I'm gonna be using. For my uh, tools today, I have a standard number two pencil, I have two brushes, I have a half inch wide flat bristle brush, and I also have a number 10 round brush, and I will refer to these as small and large as we go through the painting process. And I also have a super fancy extra tool today, which is gonna be two pieces of copying paper. <laughs> so if you're painting along, just make sure that you have those handy as well. Um, I'm gonna be using acrylic paint today. The colors are titanium white, burnt sienna, which I will call rust, Mars Black, uh, this is Deep Yellow, this is Burnt Umber, which I will call Brown, and I have Fire Red. And of course you can switch up those colors, but that's what I'm going to be using. And if you're painting along with me, you're going to also need a cup of water for washing your brushes, as well as a paper towel for drying your brushes. And down below this video, I'm gonna give you a couple of additional resources for you to use during your painting process. I have um, down there a link where you could actually purchase the same exact kit that I'm using from the large canvas to the fancy pieces of paper. And I even throw in an easel for you. Um, so that's down there as well as um, a link that you can download a free image of the final painting. So you can print that and use it as a visual reference as you go through the painting process. And there's also written step-by-step -step instructions down there for you as well. And that's all we're gonna need today. All right, so what we're gonna do for the first step is we are doing a initial very loose sketch. <laughs> so I say very loose because I don't want you to feel that yours has to be exactly like mine or perfectly anatomically correct. We're going for a, a soft, abstract figure. So if it's not exactly correct, proportionally speaking, don't worry about it. And plus, everybody's proportions are different anyway. So it's all right if yours doesn't look exactly like mine. But I'm gonna guide you with a couple of dots. We're gonna make some lines. And then hopefully by the end, we'll have something that is similar in shape to a woman. Um, so how I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna have you make a couple of dots. So I want you to go to about the midpoint of your canvas uh, at the top. And then you're gonna come down to where you feel is maybe about that, a little bit higher than the halfway point. So if this is like your halfway point, maybe stop a little bit shy of that and then come over to the left, maybe about two inches and make yourself a dot. And then you're gonna follow this all the way over to the right hand side and stop when you're about three inches away from here and then just go up maybe about an inch and a half or two and make yourself a mark. And now I want you to connect these two with just a straight line. It's gonna be a little bit diagonal, but you can just go kind of right across. And then what you're gonna do is about the, um, about halfway between these two, you can make yourself a mark that's gonna go maybe about an inch above here, somewhere about there. And then you can come straight down and stop about four inches and go a little bit to the right. So really I've just got it crooked, crooked a little bit. And I'm gonna make myself a really soft um, arcing motion from this one to this one. So this is gonna, in essence, kind of represent her spine. So we're gonna go like this and just a really kind of a soft arcing motion in through there. Um, and these represent kind of like her shoulder edges. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make myself a neck that's gonna to connect to her shoulders. So I'm gonna go a little bit to the right of here and I'm gonna make myself a little bit of a curved line. You can even hit this line if you want to and then when you get to the end, you're just gonna kind of curve it around to the 
down towards the bottom of the canvas. So I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to just kind of make myself a little bit, this should be maybe about an inch and a half to two inches wide. And you can always adjust it, make it wider if you need to. I'm going to make a little curve to kind of hit this line and then make myself an arcing motion to come down there. So now what we've done is her shoulders and her neck. Now we're going to do the, uh, the arms. So I want my arms to be higher or where I stop it higher than this part. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of make this almost a little bit of an arcing motion come in just a little bit and then out just a little bit. And again, I'm going to make it shorter than here by maybe two or three inches. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the left hand side. So I'm going to kind of bring this in just a little bit and then just swing it out just a little bit more. Now I'm going to make the interior of the body and well actually let me make the interior of the arm first so you're going to come diagonally in from the shoulder maybe about an inch or two right in through there and this is going to be the inside of the arm you this would be kind of where the elbow and just something like that and again we're just doing a nice loose fashion here come down here maybe an inch or two and then i'm going to just bring this in something like that now i've got to make her her waist so I'm going to come down the inside of the arm, maybe about an inch, and then I'm just going to kind of give a little curve, something like that. I'm going to come down maybe about an inch like this, and then make myself a little bit of a curve, something like that. Now I'm going to make my blanket that is draped over the back of her. So where I have this right arm, I'm just gonna make a little bit of a curve in through here and then maybe make myself another like curving motion to hit the edge of my canvas. I'm gonna take from here, I'm gonna do a big scooping motion to come up to this arm over here. And it doesn't have to be perfect because this is just meant to represent like a blanket kind of thing. You can even bring it down past this mark as long as when you come back up, you kind of get in that vicinity, bring it up here. You can bring all the way up to this side of the arm. And now I'm gonna make the left-hand side of the blanket. So I'm gonna just do maybe a swooping mark like that. You can even draw it if you want to. Maybe this bu buckles out something like this. And then maybe there's another piece that comes down in through here. And of course you can certainly adjust this however you want to. Um, if you need to have the visual uh, information as to where these kind of ripples go, you can certainly do that too. Now I'm going to make myself a head. So she's got a lot of hair that's up in a bun. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just make myself a big kind of a circle and then I'll adjust it accordingly. It's going to start down here. I'm going to bring it just shy of the top of my canvas by maybe, uh, I don't know, maybe like two inches. And again, I'm just going to start with just a circle and then I will adjust it accordingly. So maybe that's the start of it. Her face is going to come off of here. So maybe she's got a little cheek, maybe her chin. If you come down the neck a little bit and just bring this out like this. Again, doesn't have to be perfect. We, you know, and you'll be able to kind of bend it and shape it when we go to paint it, but something along that line. I'm going to put a, a bun on the top of her head. So I think I want this to be pretty high, but the head, I think I want to have a little bit higher and through here. And then it's going to come out, she's going to have um, a big swooping uh, hair over her forehead. I think this one wants this to be just a little bit bigger. She's got a lot of hair. So I made that circle grow just to make sure it fits her body. Make sure she's got enough of um, enough volume to fit the size of her body. And that is all I'm going to do for my sketch. We're going to use our big brush for the next step. So you can put your pencil down and get ready for the next step. All right. So what we're going to do for the next step is we are painting the first layer to our background. So I'm going to be using my large bristle brush and the colors that I'm using are white, brown, rust, red, and black. And how I'm going to do this is very messy for one. <laughs> but what I'm going to do is I'm going to have it lighter at the top 
and I'm going to transition it to very dark down at the bottom. So I'm going to start with white and brown at the top, then I don't wash my brush throughout this process. As I transition down, I will go into brown and rust, then I'm going to go down to brown and red, and then I'll be into red and black at the bottom. I'm going to be using a really chaotic brush stroke. Sometimes I might go left to right, sometimes I might wiggle it. I'm just gonna not even think about it. I'm gonna use a lot of paint and I'm gonna go for it. When you get around her body and her face, just kind of, you know, get the paint on there, but don't worry about blending it too much. If you want a soft background, you could certainly blend it, but I'm gonna have mine really messy and you don't wanna forget about these two areas. So when you get down to here, just whatever color you're using here, just make sure you put some in through there. So here I go. I'm starting with white and brown on my brush and I'm just gonna kind of use this really chaotic, messy kind of brush stroke. I'm gonna reload my brush often, and sometimes maybe I'll use more white, sometimes I'll use more brown. So whatever tone you want it to be, feel free to incorporate that. But I really want mine to have multiple colors in it, so I, um, when I go to pick up paint, maybe one time I'll pick up just brown or one time I'll pick up just white, but I want this top area to be the lightest. And then as I get down towards where her face and her shoulders are, that's when I'm gonna to start to transition into the brown and the rust on my brush. And again, I'm not gonna wash my brush, so what'll happen is it will progressively or naturally kind of get lighter as it's going down there. Again, I'm just kind of getting this area around her head and her shoulders in through here. And now I'm gonna start picking up brown and rust, and this is gonna start to get lighter or darker and darker as I get down in through here, picking up some more white so it transitions nicely in through here. So that way I don't have distinct sections going from one air, one color to the next. I like mine to kind of naturally blend in with one another, even though I'm using this super chaotic kind of brush stroke. Um, and now that I've got that, now I'm going to start using rust and red and you're going to start seeing how vibrant this is going to start getting or it, I'm going to start incorporating brown too. So I just really want this to get, I already was using brown, but um, I really just want this to get nice and dark and rich in the, in the color tone. So now I'm brown and uh, red and in a second I'm going to start to use some black but I just wanna make sure that I've got some really nice rich colors in through here. And again, you can go back up, just do whatever is intuitively coming to your, to your head. Now I'm picking up black and red. It's gonna get really, really dark. I don't wanna forget about, oops, I almost painted her butt red. <laughs> that wouldn't have been good. Glad I caught myself on that one. Um, so the black can really easily take over. So once you've got that black on there, just, you know, be mindful and do whatever you need to do to get it in the current, you know, whatever tone or darkness that you want. Oops, I'm painting over her little blanket a little bit. That's okay. We can, we can, it's abstract. It's all right. Whatever happens, happens. Uh, and then I'm just going to get the rest of this area in here. Make sure I've got these two little areas represented because I know these are the kind of areas that I just totally forget to do. So I'm just going to kind of tap my brush in through here, make sure we've got some nice deep dark colors in through here. And then we're going to actually switch brushes to our small brush for the next step. So once you've got a great layer on your background, mm, this looks nice, um, you can put the large brush away and take out your small brush and just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting the body skin. So this is gonna be the back, the arms, and the face. The only kind of little instruction that I would give to you is I'm gonna work from dark to light. The color, uh, I'm using my small brush. The colors are black, brown, rust, yellow, and white. Um, and I'm gonna put in little shadowy areas first. So that would be kind of where her spine is 
and maybe a little bit under her arms, just so there is a little bit of a dimensional element. I'll put a little bit of darkness underneath where her hair is gonna go, and then everything else is just gonna be chaotic and, and abstract, except for her face. What I'm gonna do on her face is I'm gonna put a little bit of darkness where it meets the hair, and then I'm gonna get lighter and lighter as it goes towards the edge of the face, almost like something, there's a light that's, that's making her face glow. So here we go, I'm gonna start with dark paint first. So I'm going black and brown on my brush to start. And I'm really just gonna kind of wisp in where I think some of these shadowy areas are going. And we're doing abstract. You don't have to have perfect brush strokes. You don't have to make sure everything is perfectly positioned. Um, once I've got that on there, I'm just picking up some rust and brown. And now I'm gonna start to kind of work my way into some other areas. Maybe there's a little bit of shadow down by her rear end here. Maybe there's a little bit of lighter or a little bit of shadow in through there. Now I'm gonna start picking up yellow and white and start working my way towards some lighter areas, maybe a little bit more rust on my brush. You just have fun. Whatever you're feeling in that area of her skin, just incorporate it. So I'm gonna, this is gonna be like a striping type um, brush stroke that I'm using for her whole body. So if you want yours to be more light and more genteel, you could use, or more angelic-like, you could use more white. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit lighter up as it gets up towards her shoulders too. Um, so I'm using a little bit of the darker tones down here, but now I'm going yellow and white as I'm moving up her up her back. And again, it's abstract. So it's just meant to be, you know, the impression or it's a, you know, a loose interpretation of that particular body or that figure. So if you want yours to be, you know, more realistic, you could certainly spend more time just kind of honing where the muscles are and those highlights and shadows, making sure that they're in the correct place. But I'm just having fun. I'm having an abstractly amusing time by painting this way. So I just wanna make sure I've got her whole arm painted here. Um, I've got her shoulder painted. I'm gonna come into her back now. And then I can't forget about her face. So we're doing all of the skin right now. And you can see I'm just kind of keep just moving my brush. You can move it in, you know, if you want in a in a in a rounded way where you think there might be a muscle or something like that, but as long as you've got kind of the the exterior contour the way that you want these these other colors that we're putting on there, really they don't have to be perfect. We're going to be putting this unique layer on top of it. So how whatever happens, happens. All right, so I'm just putting a little bit of the rust on my brush to get um, the darker area on her face by her hair. And then I'm gonna take my paper towel and wipe my brush off on my paper towel. And I'm gonna pick up a little bit of white and maybe just a touch of yellow to get this a little bit lighter towards the edge of her face. And if your brush is overloaded, you could certainly wash and dry it if you wanted to just to get it nice and light by the edge you don't want to lose the edge of her face but um i've got like a little cheek here i'm not uh, going full on with you know a mouth or um eyelashes or anything i'm just giving maybe the cheek and a little bit of the chin and then we are gonna use the same brush for the next step. So once you've got all of your skin painted in, you can wash and dry this small brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we're putting the first layer on her hair. I'm gonna be using my small brush and the colors that I'm using are black, brown, and rust. Um, and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be doing a darker area at the bottom and where the bun meets the, the regular head part. And then I'm gonna be doing the rest with the rust and the, and the brown so it looks a little bit lighter. So I'm gonna use um, black on my brush just to kind of get this little like shadowy area in through here. And again, abstract, think abstract, doesn't have to be perfect. So I'm just gonna kinda 
get that in through there and you can even pull it up like it's the hair is being directed up towards the bun because that's where you would where it would be pulled up to and I want some underneath the bun part and of course I'm going to pull that black in the direction of where the hair is coming from so it doesn't again doesn't have to be perfect um, and then once I've got that in there now I'm just going to pick up rust and brown and I'm going to start to get the rest of the hair on there um, and you'll notice that it really is a lot lighter when you start using the rust and the brown. But if you have a ton of black on your brush and it's still black for you, then I would definitely recommend washing, washing the brush. Um, so that way you can get some of these lighter streaks in through here. And again, abstract doesn't have to be anything perfect. Think of this as, you know, this is the direction her hair is being pulled up into the bun. And I'm just kind of going with whatever wherever my brush takes me and you can use a lot of paint or a little bit of paint whatever you know you're feeling at the moment if you feel that you know maybe you want her her front part to bump out a little bit more feel free to do so I feel like mine should be bumped out a little bit more so that's why I pull it out and then I'm going to go ahead and make sure I've got this whole area covered and then I'm going to do the same thing for the swirly um for the bun part uh but you can really be even more chaotic with that part um, because it could be a messy bun. My hair is often in a very messy bun. <laughs> you could use a little bit of black if you wanted to, like in the center area, but really it should just be a, a messy kind of loose, especially since we're doing abstract, you know, kind of circular kind of motion. Um, to make sure that it reads as a hair bun instead of like a hat per se. Um, and then once you've got this on here, we are going to switch brushes to our big brush. So you can um, wash and dry the big brush and get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our blanket. So I'm gonna use my big bristle brush. The colors that I'm using are black, brown, rust, and white. And as I do this, I'm gonna be going from dark to light. Um, I do wanna have a really light area at the top as well as at the top of the rip of the wrinkles or ripples. So I've kind of given myself a little bit of a roadmap already just so I know where the flow of the deeper parts or the ripples are gonna go. Um, so I will be putting my dark areas in there first and then I'll just build it to the light. Um, and again, all the while I'm thinking, doesn't have to be perfect, it's an abstract. I'm just gonna have some fun. So I'm gonna start with a little bit of black. I won't wash my brush throughout this process. I'm just gonna kind of give myself a couple of little contour lines, I guess is a good way to, to refer to them as. So I'm gonna go over here and then maybe I'll do another one in through here, down like this. Now I'm not washing my brush, I'm gonna pick up a little bit of brown and I'm gonna continue those contour lines by making them a little bit wider or thicker. Um, I'm just gonna kind of bring it in through here. I want it to look like it's flowing and that maybe it's wrapping around her body in a, in a gen gentle kind of way adding a little bit more there. Now I'm gonna pick up a little bit of the rust and I'm gonna start working my way a little bit towards those lighter areas. But I'm still kind of blending it a little bit, um, not a whole lot. As soon as I start picking up the white, you'll see how this all starts to really work together. But I'm just using a loose kind of brush stroke, again, because it's abstract, not washing my brush, gonna start picking up my white and now I'm gonna start adding in all of these beautiful kind of white or, or lighter areas. So you can still blend them in. You have a dirty brush, so it's gonna naturally kind of blend in anyways. Um, but while you have the dirtiest of your brush right now, you can really work in these ripples um, or wrinkles a little bit more. Um, with that white paint on your brush, it just kind of blends it in a little bit. Um, now. 
again, I'm still just picking up white at this point and just kind of letting happen what's what's going to happen. So it's I'm working my way towards those areas where I'm really going to want them to be the white, the lightest, which is going to be up on the top of those ripples. But if at any time you feel like you have to um, wash your brush, like if you're not getting and it, those darker colors off your brush and you're really ready to go into some lighter colors, feel free, wash it and dry it. And you know, or if you want more rust on your brush, like if you want to bring more of that, that um, gentle brown color in there, feel free to do so. Again, it's, it's all what is coming naturally to you. This is, this is meant to be an enjoyable experience. You just gotta go with whatever is coming out of you naturally. I do wanna bump this out on the edge just to make sure it reads as it's kind of wrapped around her body. And same thing over here. So just if you can make sure that you get a nice little bump over there that will help to tell the story that it is a blanket that's wrapped around her body and again if it's too um distinct in in the color sections feel free to just kind of have fun and let them blend in together let them kind of flow as they would naturally and then once you've got it all on there you just kind of sit and tweak it whatever way you want to. I think I want a little bit more brown in through here, get a little bit more um, kind of movement on that, on the blanket. Or if there's too much black, just dull it down, you know, bring some, bring some brown and white and just kind of get that to look a little bit more of a, of a natural color. Make sure there's some bends in here. Whatever, whatever works for you, just kind of, you step back, look at it from a distance and just have fun as you're, as you're creating this, this blanket. Just make sure that you kind of get this area covering her back so it doesn't look like you, like you missed painting there. And I'm just gonna kind of give it one last look over. I think I want this to be a little bit more darker over here with a little bit more color in it and again it's all going to be a personal preference so you might want yours more on the on the reddish side or more on the gray side maybe you use a little bit more black in yours so again whatever is visually appealing to you and i'm thinking that's pretty good i think i want make sure i've got some down here i'm using a ton of paint too i uh, you know so these are probably the the paintings that are gonna use the most paint because I just I just have fun you know you could even incorporate a little yellow if you wanted to but that again is just totally up to you and then we are going to let's see we're going to use our ooh, we're going to use the paper for the next step so you can put your big brush away grab your paper and get ready for the next step All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is we are painting our paper streaks. So before we start this though, I do wanna kind of forewarn you that you wanna have your canvas dry. So you could either, you know, take an extra long break and sip a little bit more, or you could blow on it, or you could take a blow dryer and just dry it. Um, but if yours is already dry, great. Um, so we're gonna be using the copy paper and I'm gonna be crimpling it twice. I do it one time really tight. So this is too tight to do, to actually use as an applicator for me. So I crimple it tight so it adds extra wrinkles and then I uncrimple it and then I recrimple it, but looser. So when I go to crimple it this time, I'm just gonna keep it in a looser fashion. And, excuse me, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip it in my paint and I'm gonna add the streaks. But the colors I'm gonna be using are white mostly and then after i do my white layer if i want to i can add any additional colors so maybe i want to add a little bit more red here or a little bit more rust there or you know whatever you're feeling at the moment please feel free to do so so i'm going to start with white paint and i take my my fancy painting tool and i'm going to dip it in my white paint and you can either wipe it off on the side of your palette or you can take a paper towel and just kind of dab it on the paper towel just so you don't have too much paint as you're um, as you're 
going in for that first stroke. Once you get used to it, you'll get the hang of it. Um, but initially you don't want too much paint. And then the other thing I want to tell you is don't push hard. So if you push hard, you'll get a flat spot. So you're just going to kind of lightly almost tap it and streak it as you go. I'm going to start at the top just so I can kind of see how this is going to, how much paint I have on my brush. And you can see I've got these really cool effects happening. I'm going over my entire canvas. So I got some vertical. Now maybe I'll go and skirt it back and forth, left to right. And again, I'm going um, vertical and horizontal. You could certainly go diagonal if you wanted to. And when you feel like you're running out of paint, feel free to go and add a little bit more. But you can see I'm kind of doing it all, almost until I'm out of paint on my brush. Uh, on my brush. It's not a brush, it's paper. <laughs> on my painting tool. And if you need to, you can always um, use a different side of your paper or you can use that second piece of paper. I had to get two pieces of paper in case one of them gets too used. You can always utilize that second one. I think I actually want more paint on my on my tool here. Um, and again, this is going to be a personal visual preference. You might want tons of this. You might want very little of it. You might want more colors or less colors. Um, in a minute, I'm probably going to, it's very noisy. I'm noticing. <laughs> I guess I should probably talk louder. I just noticed how loud this was. Um, but in a moment, I'm probably going to start adding some additional colors. But again, this is going to be something that you personally um, want to use more of or less of. You could even use like a dotting type technique. So whatever is working for you, just roll with it. You, it's, you know, this is the fun part of abstract painting. You get to make it as, you know, interesting or as subtle or as dramatic as you want it to be. Gosh, I, I should probably figure out how to turn down the volume of my paper. But again, you can really like, I like the drama of these streaks. So I'm just going to keep going until I have enough of them on here where I'm thinking it is, it works well. And sometimes I work them up and down when they're still wet. So um, I think I'm going to put maybe some, mm, I'm digging this. I think I'm going to actually pick up, I'm going to, reverse my paper so I have a clean side of it. I'm gonna pick up a little bit of red. I'm gonna be wild and crazy here. I'm gonna put a little bit more red on top of here, maybe streak some through the back, ooh, right on top of that blanket. Again, you can, because we're just doing these streaks, you can still see what's happening underneath it and it just is so cool. I'm gonna actually paint with it. I'm gonna paint some little red streaks in the hair, maybe go in this direction because that's nice and complimentary with everything else that's happening in the painting. Maybe I'll pick up a little bit of yellow and white and you know, just again, have as much fun with this as you want to. You can, maybe I'll add, I don't know, ooh, I, I like that red there. Uh, maybe I'll add a little bit of rust to my, to my brush. I keep calling it a brush, it's not a brush. To my painting tool, maybe I'll put some of this in through the back. And if you do something that you don't like, just give it a minute, Dr let it dry, and then maybe you can do something subtle on top of it that helps to disguise it if you, you know, if it's not working out the way that you want. I'm gonna put some back over here. And then we are going to be, ooh, what are we doing? We've got our small brush that we're gonna be using for the next step. I think I'm gonna just put a couple of white streaks in through here. So when you get done having as much fun on your streaks as I am, if you needed to use your other brush, feel free to do so, but, uh, or your other piece of paper. But once you've got all your streaks on here, we are going to be using that small brush for the next step. Hmm, it's hard to stop. So you can just get ready. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the second step to the hair. So I'm gonna use my small brush, and really what I just want to give the idea or the information of is that there's maybe some fallen pieces, some little curly, squiggly pieces. So I need to use the same colors that I used in the hair, which 
Oh, actually, I've used every color in there. <laughs> but I'm going to concentrate with um, maybe black, brown, and rust so they you can really kind of see them. So I'm going to start with all three, black, brown, rust, and white. I'll use a little white at the end for a highlight. So black, rust, and brown all on my brush at the same time. And I know I'm going to want a couple of little skinny pieces. So what I like to do with my brush is kind of spin it in my paint on the side of my palette. That's gonna make it nice and pointy. And then when I go to do the smaller pieces, I'm not gonna really press that hard. So I'm gonna have a couple of pieces coming like as if they've fallen from the bun or have made their way out of the bun a little bit. And then I'm just gonna kind of maybe wiggle it down into the back so you can kind of see it draping over the back. And they don't have to be perfect. I'm making them like curly hair, but you could certainly make yours straight if you wanted to, whatever works for you. Just try not to make them too consistently the same as each other. And then I'm gonna make a couple little flyaway ones coming out over in through here. And you do wanna make sure that you can see them. So they have to have enough contrast, which means either lighter or darker than whatever they're on top of. Um, and then once I've got them kind of in place, as many as I want to be in place, now I'm gonna not wash my brush, just pick up a tiny bit of white paint, keeping with the abstract kind of theme to it. I'm just gonna kind of add these little hints of highlights going down as they cascade down the head. And you don't have to hit every little spot, but if you can hit a couple of the spots, that's gonna give the illusion of these little tiny curls or pieces of hair coming off. And then we have one tiny step left to do that's gonna be with this small brush. So you can wash and dry the small brush and just get ready for the next step. All right, so what we're gonna do for the next step is the final step to any painting, which is to sign it. So I'm gonna use my small brush. I usually sign mine in the bottom left or the bottom right. I think I'm gonna sign mine over here um, and I'm gonna sign it with black paint. So I like to sign mine with my initials, but you could certainly use your first name or the date or a symbol, whatever works for you is totally fine by me. And that is gonna conclude this painting. I hope you enjoyed the abstract process and you created yourself a fun painting and I look forward to painting and sipping with you again sometime.